By some algorithmic malady, you have tripped into the John Freitag channel. So, a couple months ago, we made a couple films on uh, Connor's new 977H. A brand new 19, probably 61, 60, somewhere in there. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this film. What? So, Connor is hard at work on his new acquisition. Yeah. A whole bunch of white goo came out of just about everything. Did it? Yeah. yeah and water flows right through it. So I gotta have it under a roof once I get the fluid to. Hmm, how are we gonna do that? Yeah. Yeah. Just back the back half in. <laughs> I get the whole thing in. Wait a minute, you gotta put that roof on it. I am gonna put a roof on it. That is gonna be something. Wrong color though. He has a green color, it'll be good. Green and rust. Yep. Now this is red because it was originally a Hawthorne equipment from Coatesville, PA. And you can get on their website and see old videos of them running this thing. Well, yeah, there's pictures of it, I think. Well, there we don't know for sure. There's at least three of them. Just L3. like this. That's L3, Loader 3, probably, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. A little bit of history behind yeah. it. That's neat. That's neat. It's a lot of cool fabrication stuff that they did to it. Like somewhere along the line, they broke off the hydraulic filter housing and they re-welded it. Yeah, they sure welded the hell they out of that. They welded it. And then there's some other welder repairs that are pretty neat, like this boom linkage here. It's yeah, look at cool. this. Check out that linkage repair they did. That is a weld. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing fires right up, runs nice, moves, does what it's supposed to. It's Tracks angle. are in really good shape. Rollers look good. Cat can't get me the lower rollers. They can't. No, they go aftermarket or parts machine. Really? He's, yeah, 15 years ago they were like 370 bucks. Yeah. So, who knows what they'd be now. No rebuild kit, nothing, huh? No. So I drained a bunch of fluid out of it the other day, and it was white goo like that. You know, it was all milk shaked up. That looks pretty nasty. It was gross. I've gotten rid of that already. Put it in old buckets. We'll recycle it properly. Yes. It's gone off to the facility. And... I got a bunch of new fluids here. Go around to the front pocket. Like. Look at this. It looks... <laughs> you need more? Yeah. Holy cow. I really do. I bought good Rotella for the engine. Uh-huh. I then, see that right there. Yep. I'm going to throw this five gallons in the bevel gear and range transmission. Yeah, it's best, everything specifies 30 weight, but 1540 Traveler heavy duty diesel engine oil. 30 weight and 10 weight. So I got that Ultra, VP Ultra for the... Oh, I see what you got. Yep. It's like... 20 weight, but I'm going to use that where it requested 10 weight for the steering clutches. Uh huh. Because this hydraulic fluid is like 20 weight. Now, the steering clutches, how much oil does that take? Well, the book tells me, but it, it's going to suck up that five gallons. No kidding. Yeah. This is a 15 weight hydraulic oil. It says not to use where there's wet brakes or final drive gears or transmission clutches. So I was thinking about just using this stuff, but then I read that. Oh, yeah. Okay, the VP says it's compatible with CAT TO2. So TO2. I went that way. TO2. TO2, TO4. All right, well, it looks like you're oiled up. Just got to start putting that stuff in there, huh? Filters first. Filters, yeah. And it takes all the same filters, which is engine oil, transmission oil, or power yeah, shift. The power shift and the engine oil take the same filter cartridge. So I got three of them, guys. Hopefully it's correct. According to the computer, it was. Well, computers are never wrong. Especially the computers from 1960. Cat guy. <laughs> it's this guy. Ooh, that's a nice looking filter. Made in USA. I can't wait to see what the old ones look like. I think this hasn't been serviced in a while. Yeah, well. Judging by the dirt and grime around the filter housings. Probably hasn't been serviced for a while. It's been serviced since the 70s. I would, really wouldn't be surprised. Oh, no. I would, I, no, I bet you. I bet you. Because in the 80s, people were all about uh, 977Hs. They were? Oh, yeah. This is the H. Uh, I mean, I'm so, uh, 11. K, the K. K and L's. L was the newest version of it. I think that was last. And then they I had an 11K. 973. Yep. Mid engine, hydrostatic, way advanced. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not, right? Even nope. that's obsolete. Everything goes obsolete, but I got this for like less than scrap price, so. Yeah. 
It's the way to get them. Uh, what it's else you gotta do? It, yeah, it I is. just and fluids and filters. I'll have six, seven hundred bucks. Yeah. I'm not even changing everything. I'm not going to dump out <coughs> power shift. No. I'm just going to make sure there's no water at the bottom of it and add this 30 weight. I did find regular 38 weight. Heavy duty diesel engine oil. And it also says that it is a Caterpillar TO2. Really? Yep. Replacement oil. So I could run this in everything too. This would be good stuff to run in it. I think you oughta. Yeah, but I can't find it. This. Is, I could buy it like this, but I can't find the five gallon buckets anywhere. Well, I'll just buy more of them. Yeah, well, it's 140 bucks there. Really? For Traveler? Yep. 140 bucks for six gallons of Traveler. Okay. I know, but I didn't want to put anything else in the power shift. So. No, you don't want that getting goofed. I'm thinking that that's what's in the power shift, so I wanted to yeah. put that in the power shift. That'll work, yep. I think so. I, we're, we're to the point where we can Put the new filters in, put the plugs back in, and, and dump oil. Mm -hmm. So we gotta get a bunch of clean funnels. All right, I'll give you a hand. Okay. okay, he just told me, little dipsticks here. This is for the steering clutch housing. And he said he took out a bunch of goo and stuff out of there, and I can't get it off now. I just turned it a hair, and now it's stuck. Anyway, you take these caps off, that's the dipstick, and you fill it up the level. Connor's gonna work on, on the engine oil filter, and I'm gonna start working on this power shift filter. It's right over here. That guy right there. So I gotta clean that lid off and pull that apart. Looks like I gotta give this a couple love taps to shake the top loose. Probably just to break the paint. Oh, that loosen it up. Yes, it did. I can wiggle it now. I wonder if you got a gasket for this or we have to make one. So I think now that plug, yep, there's oil coming out of the plug now. I can see it down there. Hopefully it's all getting into my little bucket. What? You found it? Yeah, it's not in this mid pan. Oh, it's in the front pan way up by the radio. That's where the oil drain is? Yeah. Yep. Told you I wouldn't make you yank that belly pan. I mean, nobody ever changed the oil in these. Yeah, you're right. No, I was with you. I need a three-quarter inch drive. Three-quarter inch drive what? Uh, you know, like the breaker bar. Oh, just the drive? I've got the breaker bar back in the back of the machine. All right, let me see what I can find you. And then you can slide those pans back. Sure. It kind of says the, oil, the engine oil is black. I can't believe it. <laughs> black as can be. I see a big plug. That is a big plug. I don't know if you can see that down there, but... Ooh, it's a big plug. There it is. Inch and a quarter hole, it popped, flopped out. Of yeah, so then oil just started spewing, and he got really nervous, didn't you, Connor? I did. I wonder why. Yeah. All right, so looks like I just about got this lid ready to come off, and that oil's coming out of there. Come on, little lid. And everything's got dirt on it. I don't even know where the filter oil is going to come out. It's going gonna, gonna to ooze into that mud in the bottom of those belly pans. <laughs> no, I got a catch bucket. I caught the stuff on this side. I cut a antifreeze jug kind of yeah. fit. Dropped it in between the frame? Yeah, it's exactly what I did. Okay. I don't know why I can't get this to come off. I need a couple, I need a little pry. You need a cry? A pry. I didn't need a cry. Not a cry, a pry. Gosh. Every man needs a good cry. <laughs> <laughs> I said a pry. <laughs> don't make me cry. All right, I gotta go get something to pry with. No, there's not gonna be a whole lot of oil. The filter takes up most of it. So I got this lid coming off. Wow, what a nifty gizmo. That's clean in there. Look how clean that is. That daggum thing's spotless. Is it really? Yeah, it's clean, clean, clean. The filter is? And there's an O-ring that's in a recess. Did you get new O-rings with your things? I don't know. I hope they're in the filter. Cats, all that they say they are all the time. Oh, they are. Because this, this O-ring is a little stiff. Yeah. It's a little, it feels a little hard to me. Hey. Not that I wouldn't reuse it. Well, we might be. So I won't destroy it. And let's see what the filter looks like coming up and out. We'll it's got a daggum fleet guard filter in it. Does it really? Fleet guard. When did they start? That's not the oldest thing in the world. No. It's an LF558 fleet guard. 
They don't have date codes on them. Things don't look that horrible. I don't know if they do, we'll have to look. We'll look it over good. Yeah, not that bad. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. Well, they look quite similar. The new one's going in, but guess what? I shook the box. No, no O-ring. You cheapskates cat. There's a no ring. It's a no O-ring. See how clean that is, Con? Nice. Man. The O-ring's gotta go inside the thingy first. So I'll, drop, I'll put this back together. Well, that's great. It doesn't smell burnt either. No. And that's the power shift, so there's clutches and stuff. Yep. If anything was gonna burn. Yep. And it's not, the oily ice that I'm seeing looks very clean. Cool. A little bit that I spilled on the track here. Look at that, it's clear. Very nice, good, happy. Hey, thing's 60 some years old. Drop that in there. Put the O-ring back. Hopefully I get that right. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. Boy, don't drop anything in the belly pants. Or we will be taking a lot off. Yeah, for an O-ring, I don't think so. No, for a bolt, you would. And then our Pre, our pre-spring loaded cap gizmo. I'm not gonna blow anything until you get the cap. No, don't blow anything. Okay. Oh, that'll work. Gosh, that O-ring feels pretty good. Just gotta take up some space. Luckily, I have the cat number 1728 filter cover hammer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a genuine cat technician part, isn't that it? That is. Most cat techs don't even know about this tool. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it became obsolete for a plastic mallet. <laughs> plastic mallet? Yeah, plastic mallet. Did they, they even have plastic when this thing was built? Yeah, they called it oil. They called it oil. <laughs> Actually, it had vapor oil. We just pulled the guy torque this down to. Well then, I guess I'll just use my hand torque wrench. I bet you're pretty close. I'd say 32, just, just to be different. Alright, gotta snug them down a little more. Then that'll be done. Hey guys, I hope you liked that little video on the 977H. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.